Agent, what's different in NBA 2K22? Well, this is what your apartment looks like. It's about 300 square foot and about every bit as disappointing from the outside as well. You're living in relative poverty if you compare yourself to some of these other city dwellers. It's only gonna be a matter of time, ladies and gentlemen, before I get myself a penthouse. This right here is Ricky. He's your business manager and also your adult best friend. He gets an ego trip out of convincing himself that he had anything to do with your success. And no exaggeration, your player in NBA 2K22 is a YouTube star that wants to be in the NBA. You can't make this stuff up. This is basically like a flight react storyline if you put it in a video game. Of course, NBA 2K is always on the bleeding edge of innovation. This right here is social media hooked up live to your television. And in 2K's attempt to go more RPG-like, it feels more like a conversation simulator. It's go here, talk to this person, go there, talk to that person. I just signed with a brand new agency that promised to hook me up with some sweet deals. My best adult friend, Ricky, who's by no means trying to take advantage of me, he He's working out the kinks. <laughs> New feature in 2K22, you can fast travel right back to your apartment. Unfortunately though, that is the only place they'll let you fast travel to. Even in 2K's efforts to make this city more convenient and easier to ride around in, it's still wildly inconvenient to get to destinations. If you look on this west side here of the city center, you might notice a lot of blue icons. Those are different stores in a shopping center. Yes, I said shopping center. And they got some new stores. So you gotta pop out your skateboard and get to chop in a way. Oh my god, what do we have here, lady? Yeah! Damn! I wish an NBA 2K developer was horny enough to like build fat asses on some of these women. I don't know what's gotten into me, guys. I apologize. They're just pixels, but look, they're they're like in downward dog position. They also built a whole bunch of different ramps and sorts so you can do some tricks on your way in and around the city. And once you make your way to the shopping center, you might be remiss to find yourself amongst a lot of different AI. Some of these AI are even conveniently holding shopping bags because of course they're spending their hard earned VC on American Eagle as well. American Eagle, one of many new stores. You might also notice there's a State Farm store. What can State Farm sell you in NBA 2K, you ask? Not only merchandise, but no exaggeration, this is Jake from State Farm. Face scanned into NBA 2K22, and once you get done talking to him, he gives you his clothes so you can walk around as a State Farm sales associate as well. I like how 2K packaged all the stores in one area this year because they were pretty scattered last year, which made it challenging for you to just move around and get the things that you needed. Oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hawk, by the way. They don't all have their own individual stores. Some of them are probably gonna be like in JT Sporting Goods or Swags as like seasonal or temporary drops. Unlike 2K21 Next Gen, both the board and the ball are free and you start with both when you enter the city. Like last year, there's four different boroughs or affiliations, the Western Wildcats, the Northside City Knights, Heights, the Beasts of the East Side, East Side, and of course the South City Vipers Hypers. When you load into the city, they throw you in one randomly you can choose to switch if you'd like to 2k also added in 3v3 and 1v1 matchmaking for those who wanted a convenient option but in true nba 2k fashion they made even the convenient stuff inconvenient for you to reach because for you to even play 1v1 matchmaking that's not an option in your main menu it's a place that you have to set a waypoint for and actually inconveniently travel to. It's not hard to miss because once you spend three minutes skateboarding to the destination, there's a big sign that says the market. So you go to the glowing light and you press X and here you go, you finally match made in inconvenient fashion. I'm pretty sure this was like a 2K19 dodgeball arena. I am playing this on day zero, so I, I had the game before launch. So I'll be honest with you, I've been waiting here for 20 minutes. I have not found a game. I do appreciate this guy's enthusiasm. Part of me believes if he did a better job, maybe people would be here in matchmaking waiting for me. <laughs> well, why don't you look at that, fellas? It looks like I have to attend a draft party at my apartment. Oh yeah, you guys missed the part where I went to West Virginia University and then I got dropped out in the first round of like that big college tournament everybody talks about in March. And then everybody, including my fans, my business manager, and my self-esteem was disappointed in me. But it's okay because I'm gonna enlist in the NBA draft anyway way because I want to see my whole career combust in the funniest way imaginable. So that's what I'm doing here, guys. I'm ready for draft day. Let's do it. You're the newest member of the Detroit Pistons.
No! Thank you so much. So in the next episode of go there, talk to this person, go there, talk to that person, your agent wants to talk with you and it sounds urgent, better go see what's up. So hop on your handy dandy skateboard of death. All right, hold on. I gotta make a call. Hey, Davis, quick question, my brother. Talk to me, my brother. Uh, what's, what's like a really good pickup line? Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Right now. Are you Googling it? No, I'm researching through my brain. Do you like raisins? How do you feel about a date? Damn it. Oh! <laughs> do you like raisins? How about a date? My Riz is not existent, fellas. So my agent approaching me like it's just some kind of doomsday level event. It's hilarious. I need to have an answer before you leave this room because if we're gonna shape the narrative, we need to get out ahead of this now. Of course we use social media to make this thing public, baby. I'm joking around a lot, but there actually is a decent amount that's new in NBA 2K22. For starters, there's like a lot of different quests. There's career, personal brand, season, city, and MVP quests you can choose from. In the Jackson Ellis Weekly Challenge, you have to play 50 park games. Not that that's challenging to do, it just takes maybe a few hours for you to complete. So this doesn't feel so much as RPG as it feels like just a generic weekly or daily challenge like any video game has. You're also required to complete these weekly challenges if you're interested in participating in the new feature 2K introduced this year called Takeover Perks. So you have a primary and secondary takeover like previous years, but now there's also a perk you can add which is almost like a modifier. For example, like Sabbath a tur, when a guarded opponent commits a turnover or a bad shot, their takeover meter gets a larger penalty. To get this perk, you have to complete Mountain Dew's daily stat challenges. I think it's a pretty neat feature. Hopefully it's not too overpowered, but it has its own use in the game. Also, all those small decisions you make in the RPG element like I just did with Kendrick Perkins, all helps map out your personality, which affects a lot of different aspects from brand deals to fans. So I have about 2 million followers right now, but to continue to get endorsements, I have to get 2.3 million or 2.5 million. And to continue to get fans, I have to do flashy, highlighting, exciting, or at least memorable things in games. But also it'll help catapult my potential side careers in music or fashion. 2K hasn't clarified how many seasons there'll be over the course of 2K22, but we do know there'll be at least a minimum of five. In the season pass, every level you get, you have the chance to unlock something new, culminating with at level 30 some new inline skates for you to skate around the city and at level 40 a new go-kart you might also have noticed at level 31 you get a shooting sleeve that gives you a plus one to your mid-range and at level 23 you get a shooting sleeve that gives you a plus one to your block I made a video explaining how that right there is 2k's way of sneaking in some potential new pay to win features into the game and while I was on stream somebody made me aware of this go into the 2k breakthrough sleeves category and you quickly realize if you look at the top left that all of these shooting sleeves that you unlock at different levels upgrade something different. So block attribute boost, mid-range attribute boost, rebound attribute boost, mid-range attribute boost. But if you had any doubts about my theory that 2K would be leaning more and more and more into pay to win, this is their commitment to doing so. The build system this year also offers a little bit more variety. People have been struggling to figure out which build is going to be the best one, although I'm sure a meta is going to surface eventually. This is my burner account. I'm playing on a New Zealand account currently, but I created an offensive threat. The purpose of this build was really to have a 92 driving dunk and an 80 vertical, so I have access to the best dunks. To have an 86 ball control, so I have access to the best dribble moves. And to have a good three-point shot, and it did all three of those. The only thing that it's lacking on is severely in the defense category. Likely because he's the cover athlete this year, Luka Doncic has animations in every dribble package, has his own layup package and dunk package. So if you want to get all Luka out, you have the option to do that this year. There's also the very new and unique dunk style creator, which although looks exciting when you first take a look, when you get down to the nitty gritty, you quickly realize that it's really just genres and subgenres of animations that already existed in previous 2Ks. Windmill, windmill reverses. So you're not really creating dunks as much as you are categorizing them in different ways. The one big pro is that you could actually create different profiles this year. So if you wanna have a profile for Park and a profile with Prime with different dunk packages, you can do that and have it saved. Yep, that's 
The sound it makes when you shoot an excellent release in NBA 2K22. An animation pops up and a sound is made. You could even equip some runway walks and runway turns. You might be wondering, Agent, what do those do? Yeah. Yeah, I bet you regret asking, huh? I can't tell if I'm impressed or highly disappointed that 2K decided to spend some of their time creating this random runway in a city. I want to go into a different timeline where this game doesn't exist just because of that five second clip. But if you're fortunate enough to not die of cringe, you can walk up to this Kobe mural, Kobe court here. It has like the reptilian Kobe Bryant vibe and the beautiful, I'm so happy they did this, man. They didn't have to, they could have just left it after last year, but I'm glad they brought it back. Kobe's my favorite player of all time, man, so this means a lot. And then right underneath that is the garage courts, which are making a return in NBA 2K22. All you gotta do is take out your ball, and assuming there's no game going on, you can just walk onto the court and hoop with some of your buddies, fellas. I love the level. I don't wanna say I love it, but I like the fact that there's just random mountains in the background. I also love the fact that on a console game, for some reason, they allow you to adjust your motion blur if you go into the settings. That's pretty cool. And for whatever reason, if you got thirsty watching these brown shirts throw up their bricks 2k has a solution for that as well hey what's up have a good one this year's Gatorade training facility doesn't look too different from last year's and just like last year's it also punishes you if you forget to throw on your headset once you throw on your headsets you can head upstairs to the rental course which you don't rent anymore but only after taking your headphones off to be punished further yeah this year the rental courts aren't rental courts you just reserve them they're for you and your friends only they just forgot to replace the text above it that says rental courts lazy mistake from 2k a lot of the dribblers are actually enjoying the dribbling so far in nba 2k 22 on, on both current and next gen which is surprising if you haven't gotten a chance to see it yet this is what the aggressive skill dunks look like there's a dunk meter this year when you attempt them the dunk meter is only for the aggressive skill dunks if you want to do a regular dunk there's no meter for that you just attempt it as you usually would but to do contact dunks this year unlike last year where it was very overpowered this year you have to at least time it it's not hard to time it but just like jump shooting, you have to account for latency because there is a delay when you play on the city. If you're familiar with the Gatorade training facility last year, it's the same thing, bench press. Oh, that's iPod right there. Hold on, let's get iPod, iPod, iPod! Different NPCs around the 2K22 city are gonna have missions for you so you can pull up to them and talk. There are a lot of ways to score the ball. I want to see you express Why she got goosebumps? Is she horny? Oh my God. I'm horny too. I know at first glance, when you take a look at the NBA 2K22 CD, it doesn't seem like much has changed, but the entire way that this game is played has been changed. From the sounds of it, there's actually not much gameplay differences at all, aside from the aggressive skill dunk between 2K22 current and next gen. It really just depends if you prefer this RPG style, go here, talk to this person, go there, build up your portfolio, you have your personality, you have your side career, or if you want the more like traditional my career on current gen, where it takes place on a yacht and there's different decks to the yacht and there's zip lines and like convenient quality of life changes made there as well. And believe me when I say I will be exploring on both generations. If you guys missed my last video, I basically summed up all the information there was pre-NBA 2K22 launch, so if you don't know which one to buy, go ahead and click that video, I'm gonna leave it right here. Go ahead and click it. It's right here. Go ahead and click it. <laughs> if not, man, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Peace.